Long ago, in a land called Britain, there was a young boy named Arthur. Arthur lived with a kind man named Sir Ector and his son, Kay. He didn't know much about his real parents. He was just a simple boy who did chores and helped with the work around the house. But Arthur's life was about to change in a very big way. One day, Britain was in trouble. The old king had died, and there was no one to take his place. The people were worried because they needed a strong and wise king to lead them. There were many knights and lords who wanted to be king, but no one knew who should rule. Then, a strange and wonderful thing happened. A sword appeared in a stone in the middle of a town. Written on the stone were the words, Whoever pulls this sword from the stone is the rightful king of Britain. Many strong and brave knights tried to pull the sword from the stone, but no one could do it. The sword stayed stuck in the stone, no matter how hard they pulled. One day, Sir Ector and his son Kay went to a tournament, and Arthur went along to help. Kay was supposed to compete in the tournament, but he forgot his sword at home. He asked Arthur to go and get it for him. Arthur ran back to the house, but the door was locked, and he couldn't get inside. On his way back, he saw the sword in the stone. Arthur thought, maybe I can borrow this sword for Kay. He grabbed the sword and, without much effort, pulled it out of the stone. When Arthur brought the sword to Kay, everyone was shocked. They knew the story of the sword in the stone. Arthur had done what no one else could do. Sir Ector, Kay, and the other knights realized that Arthur was the true king of Britain. They knelt before him and swore to follow him. Arthur didn't know how to be a king at first, but he was a kind and fair person. Merlin, a wise old wizard, became Arthur's teacher and helped him learn how to be a good king. Merlin told Arthur that he was destined for greatness. Arthur was not just a king, he was the best king Britain would ever have. Arthur ruled from a great castle called Camelot. He brought peace and justice to the land. To help him rule, Arthur created the Knights of the Round Table. The Round Table was special, because it had no head, meaning no one was more important than anyone else. This made all the knights equal, and they were all loyal to King Arthur. The knights were brave and true. They went on many adventures, and fought for what was right. They helped the weak, fought against evil, and searched for the Holy Grail, a magical cup said to have great power. After becoming king, Arthur received another sword, called Excalibur. This sword was magical and very powerful. It was given to Arthur by the Lady of the Lake, a mysterious and magical woman who lived in a lake. She told Arthur that as long as he had Excalibur, he would be a great king and no one could defeat him in battle. Excalibur was not just a weapon, it was a symbol of Arthur's power and the hope of his people. Whenever Arthur went to battle with Excalibur, his enemies were afraid. They knew they could not win against the king with the magical sword. Arthur was a good king, and his people loved him. He married a beautiful woman named Guinevere, who became his queen. They were happy together, and Camelot was a place of peace and happiness. But not everything was perfect. One of Arthur's best knights was Sir Lancelot. Lancelot was brave, strong, and loyal. But he fell in love with Queen Guinevere, and she loved him too. This was a terrible secret, because Lancelot and Guinevere both loved King Arthur and didn't want to hurt him. When the secret was discovered, it caused great trouble in Camelot. The knights were divided, and some of them fought against each other. The love between Lancelot and Guinevere made King Arthur very sad, but he tried to be wise and fair, even in such a difficult time. As time went on, King Arthur's kingdom started to weaken. There were many enemies, both outside and inside Camelot. 
One of Arthur's enemies was his own son, Mordred. Mordred was a wicked and evil man who wanted to take the throne from Arthur. He gathered an army and fought against King Arthur. The final battle between Arthur and Mordred was terrible. Many knights were killed, and Camelot was destroyed. In the end, Arthur fought Mordred and killed him, but he was also badly wounded. Arthur knew that his time as king was coming to an end. After the battle, Arthur was taken to a mysterious place called Avalon. Some say that Avalon was a magical island where Arthur could rest and heal from his wounds. Before he left, Arthur asked one of his knights to throw Excalibur, his magical sword, back into the lake where it came from. The knight did as Arthur asked, and the lady of the lake took the sword back into the water. The legend says that King Arthur did not die. Instead, he is resting in Avalon, waiting for the day when Britain needs him again. People believe that one day, when the country is in great danger, Arthur will return and save them. And so, the story of King Arthur is a tale of bravery, magic, and hope. Even though many years have passed, people still remember King Arthur as the greatest king who ever lived. His story teaches us about courage, justice, and the power of doing what is right, no matter how hard it may be.